Hello friends, my name is Rajiv Priyadarshi and I'm from PR3 Systems. Today we are going to talk about IBM Information Governance Catalog. In this brief video, we'll talk about what are the different components and what does it entail. So let's talk about information governance. Information governance is a process where you talk about governing policies and rules so that you can leverage the information assets within your organization, have standards in place so that you can get the benefits to get advantage in your business. So there are three components to information governance, the people, process, and technology. So we'll be talking about the technology piece. We also help organizations dealing with their people and process aspects, but that is not going to be the scope of this course. So within information governance catalog, we have an integrated data dictionary. Now why do we need to have an integrated data dictionary? Within an organization, you have got different departments and the same term can mean different things for these departments. So for example, if this is a credit card company, a customer ID could mean every person that you have sent any kind of a mailer in the past. So it could be a marketing, it could be uh, any kind of a message, whether it's a credit card statement or a marketing statement, anything. Whereas for the finance department, it could be only those users who are actually a customer who are paying for their bills and who are getting statements from the bank. So how do we make sure that the different customer IDs are understood in the right context? So within information governance catalog, you've got business glossary which gives you the terms and it also allows you the ability it gives you the ability to customize a term based upon specific applications. So by looking at the terms and the corresponding metadata and how it's linked to the actual data, you have an, a complete understanding of when you look at the data, what exactly this term means and it could be linked to the dictionary. So this really helps in making sure that you know exactly what is the data that you're talking about what it means and how you're using it. Many times it also is important that for every term or every piece of data you know exactly who is the owner. So you, for every aspect or for every term you need to have a data steward who is the owner for that particular term. So for any new terms or any changes the steward has to be involved. You also have people who are Basically, his steward is the responsible person for a term. You also have influencers, you also have approvers, and so on. So it's very important that there is a single owner for each piece of data and each term within the dictionary. Let's talk about lineage. Many times when you look at a dashboard, the final, the CXO who's looking at the dashboard, he might question, hey, I." this particular sales figure for this product doesn't look right. I want to know exactly where you got that data from. So that process of understanding the final data from the source and exactly what transformations resulted in the final data, that is called lineage. A lineage could be business lineage or it could be technical lineage and both of these processes are supported in information governance catalog. Many times you also have to define rules and policies for different sets of data. For example, a social security number can have a specific number of characters. So it could be three characters, dash two characters, and four characters at the end. So you need to, need to enforce the, these rules. Suppose if there's a social security number with just three digits, you know that there's a problem with that data. So rules and policies allow you to make sure that as you are storing the data, you do a check, and also when you are doing any kind of a quality analysis, you know which are the valid data and which is not a valid data. And also, when you are using information governance catalog, it allows you to give get an end-to-end -end information blueprint. So, what is my source? What is my target? 
what all happened in the middle, who is responsible for which piece of information. When you combine all of these together, you get the right technology which can help you to get the right governance practice for your organization. So you provide the people, we help you to create the right process, and this technology in IBM Information Governance Catalog is the right technology to enable you to implement your data governance project within your organization. So I'm, I'm pleased to announce the release of our brand new course, online course on Information Governance Catalog. And you can register for this course by clicking on the link on this page or wherever you're seeing it. Or you can reach out to PR3 Systems by emailing info at pr3systems.com. I look forward to seeing you on this course. You guys have an awesome day. Let's, this will be followed by a brief demo, but I hope to see you on the other side of the course. Take care. Hello, welcome to the demo. So here we see the launch pad. Now let's get into the IDC web console. So this is what the web console looks like. It is a pretty simple interface and it is easy to learn. So for this demo, um, I want to try to keep it as simple as possible so everybody can follow along easily. But let's say we wanted to find out more about the term emp ID. So over here we can type in emp. And now we can see emp ID shows up. Now if we had some more things loaded up into our catalog, then we would have more than one option. But for this demo, we only have one. So here we found out more information about how our company uses the term emp ID. So we have the definition over here, and now we can see under what category or categories it's under, the stewards, the status, and the governed rules. And then you have more information down below, such as general information, the assigned assets, and the history. So one feature that's really cool is you can see all the history that this term has been through. So you get a better idea of how this has developed in our enterprise. And over here, we can see governed by rules. So over here, we see emp ID valid value. So if we just take our mouse and hover over it, we could see the short description of the rule. So this emp, uh, emp ID must be four digits and only numeric characters. So on the referring policy is employee data quality. So that could have some more rules under it. So this way, our organization understands what rules this must abide by. Now, Let's say that we're having a little bit of trouble and we wanted some help. So we can actually go into the steward over here. So this steward, his managed asset is emp ID. So what we can do is if we're having trouble with this asset, we can shoot him an email or maybe even call him and ask, a, ask for some help. Now, let's go back. So as you guys can see, it's very easy to navigate and very easy to see. So now I want to show you guys some of the information assets. So let's go over here, browse all. Now let's go into data files. So let's say I'm working with this data file, employee.csv, and we were having a little bit of trouble with it because we didn't know exactly what occurred to create this file. So we can hover over this and go over here and open a data lineage viewer. So in this data lineage viewer, we can filter out what we want and what we don't want. So now let's click run lineage. So now we can see how we got this employee.csv file, what has happened to it. So it looks like it went from this database that the administrator had worked on into a job, a data stage job, and then it became a CSV file. 
So let's say we wanted some more information about the data stage job. We can go over here and click Expand. So when we click Expand, we actually have a little summary of what the job did. So it went from this database to a copy stage into a flat file and another database. So another database table, I mean. So as we can see, this is a little snapshot of the job that was run, the data stage job that was run. Now we have a better idea of how this employee CSV file came to be. So this could be very helpful for us if we really want to find out more about the history of certain assets. So that will conclude the end of this demo. It was uh, short and simple. Now, if you guys want to learn more about IGC and really get a go through a course with some labs and some PowerPoint videos, then I highly recommend you guys take our course. And if you, if you guys have more questions, feel free to contact us at PR3 Systems and we'll be happy to help you guys. So I hope you guys learned a little bit and this video was valuable for you. I look forward to interacting with you guys soon. Thank you.